G'day, how you all going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, your acrylic guru. And today is that video of another painting giveaway I ran on my Facebook page. Saw the numbers run across the screen. Now keep an eye on your name and what number was given next to it in red pen. This is where you might need to pause the video to record your number, okay? So then everyone will know what their number is. So at the beginning, there's a me panning through all the names. It's up to you to work out. There's 50 applicants to work out what your number is. And when I'm pulling your number out, I will say who it is anyway, but it's always good for you at the other end there to know, oh, wow, I'm number three or I'm number eight or 44, whatever it may be. It's good to know, okay? So this video, you're going to need to pause it and stop it. And if you want to copy this video painting, there will be a traceable on my Facebook page. Go there and download it. And you can play the video to watch what happens rewind it and play and pause and paint along with me. I've got 50 applicants in my barrel here. So throughout the video, I'm going to do some pull outs and shout outs of people's names. So I'll pull a couple out for now and we'll see what we've got here. We've got number number six. Hang on a minute. Uh, we've got number 22 and we've got number... Eight. So I'll go through them again. We've got 6, 8 and 22. Let's see who they are. Number 6 is Marion Wolf from Lost Banks in California. And number 8 is... Karen Thomas. Karen Thomas. Karen Thomas from where? Virginia, USA. Virginia, USA. And number 22, Pratiba Lavique, Montreal, Quebec. Okay, those numbers will go in that bowl and later on they'll be put back into the barrel for the main draw of the winner to win this painting. Now, let's get started. Okay, so we got phthalo blue. We're using a skin tone, a burnt sienna, titanium white, yellow oxide, Payne's grey and phthalo turquoise and some clear medium retarder. These are the colours you will be needing for this painting, okay? All right, now down here on my palette, I'll show you what I'm going to use. Right, I've got my flowable white paint mixed with retarder, and later on we're going to add some phalo blue, and I've got my titanium white, the proper structured paint to put into the painting. I want to spray some water onto my canvas board. The canvas board size is right there now. You can see what size it is. All my canvas boards that I use in my tutorials are the same size. They're not a stretch canvas. So let's get all this white flowing acrylic paint on there.
Just so as I've got something to do, some beautiful, soft, lovely blending. Okay, and now I'm grabbing the phalo blue with retarder in there. I want to mix this in so we can get some beautiful blue on our sky. Okay, let's get some blue paint onto the sky. We're going to come halfway down because we're going to have water in this. So really get this brushed on there. So we've got something to blend. Okay, now can you see all those brush strokes in there? I'm going to get my blending brush and I want to pad all them out just with little twists and turns. You can leave it like that if you desire to, but I myself, I want them out so as I can have a beautiful smooth sky. I want to have some clouds in a fan shaped pattern fanning out from the horizon coming up into the sky so we can create some distance in our sky. Now my horizon line is going to be here somewhere okay and I want these clouds fanning out so I'll start at the bottom with some beautiful titanium white and I'm gonna dob some of these on just like so down on the horizon area and gradually get bigger as I go up okay now I'm hoping this is going to work I've never done this before now I just want to blend those keeping the bottoms keeping the bottoms of them because they're going to be the shadowed part of the clouds now we'll wash that brush who wants some there keeping the, the the bottom here is what I'm going to want to keep wiping my blending brush so I'm virtually working upside down I want that to be the darker that's it bring it up into the blue wipe your brush do the same with this one That's it. And this one here. Okay. I think that'll do me before I get too busy up here. Now I'm going to do the top half of these. Okay, now I'm getting my fan brush and I'm chiseling on the white paint. Now here's the cloud. So I want to get one here. And I want to blend this into this bottom area okay there's the top of my cloud I've created the top of the cloud so I want to bring this in the way I normally blend and then mash that up into the bottom there like so that's one done and then lay your other cloud on there. So creating the top shape of the cloud that you're wanting, I just choose to execute it on there like that. Grab your blending brush and blend that down into the darker area. Now we'll get this other one on there. So these are virtually the top clouds. Wipe your blending brush and blend that down into the sky. Now see here I've got bottom bits there. Sometimes I'll get carried away and blend that out. I'll leave that there. Okay, let's get some tops on here now. So I want to come in front of that now, just sort of like so, putting another cloud in front of it. It's a bit of working around, but it's creating a beautiful sky to look at. I'm, try I'm trying not to have a... Now, I'm blending this down. I want to see white at the top and shadow at the bottom, okay? Now, we'll put another one here. I want to sort of overlap. So I'm putting it on, keeping my top area, coming over that one. There we go. Keeping some of that white. See that white? That's what we want to keep. And we'll have the, the dark bottom. So be very careful blending up and down, turning around and creating the dark shadowed bottom of the cloud. That's pretty much it. 
Now this bit here that looks a bit stupid and we'll, we'll fix that up now. So these ones are gonna come here like so. Not too big, because they've gotta be smaller as they go back to the distance. And we'll blend that, keeping the bottoms nice and dark. I'm just hoping this sky works out for me. Wipe the brush, it's building up a lot of paint. That's it. I find when you give the clouds a bottom instead of blending it into the atmosphere, it gives your sky some depth going back. If, you, if they're blended down to the atmosphere, which is not too bad, but you don't want to make a habit of doing that all the time, it makes them look flat. You want your clouds to sort of come out and look alive which is I think keeping the bottoms on them helps them give this effect so that's what I plan to do I probably didn't need to put these first bits in but like I said it's the first time I'm trying it this way see I'm turning my brush around to keep the bottom blended into a shadowy area like that okay We've finished that. It's not quite turned out the way I hoped it did, but it's sort of getting that effect. So they're sort of coming from the horizon and out to your vision instead of looking like a flat cloud. Okay, now we're going to do the bottom. <laughs> So before we go on any more, let's do another turn of this barrel and pull out a few more numbers. All right, so I'll open the lid and we'll pull out, there's four there. Okay, so I'll show you all at home what numbers these are so there's no cheating involved. 16, 29, 47 and 39. Can you see all them? There's our numbers I pulled out. So we'll go for number 16, which is... Number 16 is Mariam Wolf from California. Number 29... Pativa Levique from Montreal in Canada. And number 39 is... Sherry Wilson. G'day, Sherry Wilson. From Sacramento, California. And the last one is number 47. With Mary White, number 47. From Canada. In Canada, Quebec. Not Quebec, but just Canada. <laughs> they can go in that other bowl now and they won't get called out a second time. But they're still in the draw for the main draw. Okay, I'm getting phalo turquoise onto my brush. This is the darker outer edge of the ocean. Oh, come on. All right, I'm getting my flowable white paint, my moving white paint, and I'm doing the bottom back in white because you just saw how that wasn't moving across my canvas the way I would have liked it. So we'll get all this on there. Make it a bit wet as well so it's gonna move. Okay, now look at that. We're going to get that turquoise back in there. Now, if you remember, I'm just going to have a simple wave in this. Not too simple and stupid, but something that visually looks nice. So we'll bring that down into nothing there like so. All right, that's pretty much our water. Now, before we get too carried away, I've got to put the sand in as well, all right? But look at that. That looks beautiful. Okay, now I want my wave somewhere here. So we've got our dark and light. So the way I've sort of worked out how to do a, an achievable wave is now put a darker band in your lighter area, just like so, and then blend it in. I'm using a filbert brush here, but you can use, it's a bit hard, so I think I might change brushes. Okay, I've got my dark band for the wave there, okay. Now I'm going to grab some of the... I'm, first I'm grabbing a fan brush. 
and I'm going to grab some of the white and I want to put my wave in there just a simple wave coming across so sort of coming across here just crashing along that's roughly where my waves going to be okay okay I'm grabbing some of my phalo turquoise and I'm lightening it up with some white paint just to turn it brighter because all we need to do we've marked out where the waves going so we can get our lighter color in there dance it on like so just there and a bit on this side and then grab another brush to blend that something nice and soft and we're going to blend this into that darker band that we put across the wave there come through it just like so and we're going to fade away just like that okay leaving the dark still we want to do the same on this one just there like so now you've done that one more step for this is just get a bit more white which is going to be a lot brighter than that lighter bit you've just put on all right it's not hard and we're going to lighten up this area here okay wipe your brush and blend him back out lighten that eye up wipe your brush and blend him out carefully blending take pride in your blending when you're blending so in our roll we've got that lighter color all right I'm grabbing another brush and I want to put some of these light colors just sort of in to the roll of the wave here just like so horizontally so you're virtually just like that horizontally merge them just so you're breaking all that up don't press too heavy just so we're getting some some color in there in that roll some dark and light shadows in there okay just like that so it's a small wave it's got some detail but not too much just like that and we'll go to this side as well all right let's put some of that darker back in there just scallop it into there like so wipe that brush it looks like a dog's breakfast at the moment but when you sort of tease this into that lighter color there we'll get the desire we're looking for wipe your brush just some darker shadows in there movement of probably seaweed or something under the water there keep wiping that brush as you're blending and merging these colors it's slowly picking up paint and that's what you've got to keep cleaning off otherwise it starts getting a big mess and you wonder what's going on with it now I'm just going to lightly come across that like so just so it doesn't look all dotty and jagged just like that okay so I've got my colors set for my wave now I'm grabbing a small fan brush and I'm going to come across here and bring this down I've got to wipe that brush and clean it because it's picking up a lot of color on there and we want this to be nice and white but it's, this isn't the finishing white the finishing white you want nice and bright this is just a, a fine easy simple wave all right now I've got myself a flathead brush that I've got the paint chiseled on because I just want this paint reasonably light along here it's just cressing the top there and fading to nothing and the same on the other side I'll wipe the brush reload it with clean white paint and we're going to start I want to start getting my other brush and I want to kind of get all this 
white sort of merged and blended just a bit so I can sharpen the edges up with pure white okay so we're getting it along there like so it's not a heavily violent wave it's just a nice neat little simple wave rolling forward now I just want to get this wave crisped so I'm going to come across the top of this And see this paint, this is nice and white. I've dried this band across here because it was still a bit wet. So we'll get the, the wave happening there. Just like so. Now, I'm not 100% sure what brush you should do, use for this, so use what you do a bit of practice and use what you think's comfortable. And then we want to bring this washing down, disturb just where it's hitting the surface at the bottom of the wave. That's it. Leaving some of the bits that you've toned and coloured in there. And if I've covered up too, you need some dark under here. If you cover that up, you can always put it back, okay? Okay, I'm just loaded up my little fill but I'm just getting the dark back under the front of the wave here that I've lost so I'll quickly put some in there and you can see that how important the darks are against the lights here put some on I'll wipe that brush and I'll whooshy washy blend that in there that's it I don't want to do too much and it's hard to blend because I've dried that remember now with this water here, we just want to... All right, now I'm just doing my sweeping like half X's just to sort of sink that wave back into this section here. Just something like so. And we'll come a bit lighter. Front here. Bit lighter. And then I'll just blend that. Okay, I'm just grabbing a, a soft filbert brush and blending those white layers that I just put on top there just so as they're brushing into the water a bit better than what they did look. So it looks like movement in the water. Down here I've got yellow oxide and white. I'm just mixing up because I want a bit of a lighter tone for the sand. So I'm going to mix up. Two tones of this. I'm mixing up this one here and grab a piece of this and mix in there so I've got two tones. One's really bright and one's heavier than the other, okay? Now I'm getting the darker of those two colours coming across the bottom and this from about halfway and then going to the right hand side of my canvas I want to start merging this into there because this is going to be the sand it might look weird at the moment but when it's done it'll be all right so we're just pushing that into that paint there then we're going to get some of the lighter tone that we've got I'll just wipe that brush I won't bother washing it and getting some of the lighter tones in here put it there wipe your brush get some of the heavier color again come in between it okay now wipe that brush and because it's a soft brush and just blend that but try not to kill your different lights and darks of it in there if you kill too much of your light which you might do you can add it back just so long as we've got a horizontal stroke there we go we just put it back like that it's not that hard okay just so we got some sort of a shore there I'm grabbing my long round pointed brush I'm putting the good structure titanium white on it and virtually from here I'm just doing my V's for the wash up 
So one's about there. I'm not going to muck with it too much. Grab your blending brush and blend it back into the water, keeping the front edge reasonably sharp again, like we've done in previous videos. Wipe your brush, keep wiping your brush so as you're not getting all dirty stuff everywhere. This is just the foam pulling up on the shore. Now I've got my flat chiseled brush, I've got the main structure there. Just to make it a bit better, I want to get the very bottom a lot sharper than what it is, because I've lost some of it in, in blending, just like so, along here. There we go. Now I'm grabbing my liner brush, and I'm just getting our shadow under here. I've just used a bit of phalo blue, and the phalo turquoise mixed up to create the shadow color under this wash up. And why I'm doing this side here is because of the dune that I've got to put in for the girl to sit on. Okay. Now we're going to have the girl sitting here. So what I've done with the traceable, I've folded the edge of the page so that can just sit down there when I put it on. So I want this sand dune coming up where she can sit on it okay I've gone and put a, a line there where I roughly got to put it okay so I'm going to grab the sand dune colors again which I'll use the darker one and it's going to come up about here somewhere come down there and then it'll turn into that one there so we'll get all that on That'll be our sand dune. Well, she's going to be sitting on most of it anyway, so it just works out to be a platform for our young girl sitting at the beach there, something for her to sit on, okay? I'm just putting some darker values in here where she's going to sit because she's wearing a lot of light colours. I want it to offset the lighter colours in her, so I want a darker area somewhere there I'm finding my flat chiseled brush a lot easy to achieve this sort of whitewash settling on the top of the forefront water here I was using another brush before but I quite like the way this one's applying it let's get some more numbers out of our barrel so I'll give it a nice tumble and a twist and a roll and we'll pull a couple more out see what we get all right, this is the fun part of the video, isn't it, eh? So we have number 37, 44, and 50, okay? I'll just show you those numbers so you know that's all what's happened. 37, 44, and 50. So number 37 is Lisa King from... From Kansas, USA. G'day, Lisa King. Number 44 is Tomo Sicko from um, CT, USA, wherever that is. It's abbreviated. And number 50, JC Barbie, and she is from Indianapolis in America. All right, well, we'll, pull, we'll pull another one out. Come on, let's pull another one out. What have we got there? Number 43. High numbers, aren't they, eh? Who's number 43, Reese? Who? Siki Osman from Sweden. Hello, Siki Osman from Sweden. Now, we're ready to dry this and put the traceable of the girl sitting on the dune there, okay? <laughs> all right i've just outlined the traceable of the girl sitting on top of the sand dune ready to apply the colors okay now before we paint that girl let's get some more shout out numbers going so we'll turn that barrel and open her up now we've got number 31 let's see who number 31 is there K 
Kay Smith, Latay Smith from Lakay Smith from Florida, USA. We got number thirty-three. Sandy Rogra from Pennsylvania, USA. And we'll do another one here. We've got number 25. We'll give a shout out to whoever that is. Andrea Moran from Alabama, USA. G'day to all you folk out there. Now I'm going to get some white with blue mixed up for this girl colours, okay? All right, I'm going to do her blue skirt first so the dress can go over it and then her hair over the top of it. So we'll get this going here. We'll get these colours in, just like so. It's a light blue summer dress by the looks what she's wearing. So we'll get this blocked in there, nice and sharp against the rock. So we're just sort of coming up wherever they may be, coming down the back here, all the way across. Now we want the white for her shirt, and now we'll put her shirt on, which goes up to her hair. See, so this is going over the bottom. The, this is going over the top of her skirt here. Okay, I'm just looking at my reference picture and getting some of these darker values of the blue in there to make up the creases in her shirt. She's got some distinct. Just blend it in as best as you can. I'm just using a small filbert brush here. Just something to replicate all the creases in a thin cotton shirt that she's wearing here. Now for her arm, it's got the skin tone. I've got skin tone mixed with white. Okay, there's my skin tone and I lightened it down with white to paint her arm. Now I've grabbed some raw sienna with the skin tone to get the shadow colour of her arm. Alright, so we'll just look at our reference picture there. See where the darker values are in her arm. Just something reasonable. Down there and a lot in here. There we go. That's pretty much her arm done. And we'll use the actual raw sienna on its own just to get a bit more darker right in there. Now for her hair, I got Payne's grey and I've coloured it down with some white, okay, for the two different tones in her hair. Now I want to start with the lighter top area of her hair, which is all along here, getting it on, and then we'll add the darks. The photo has black hair, so I'm sort of making it to do with those colours. And I'm picking up the straight Payne's grey now, and I want to get all her hair where it's, I'll scrape all that paint out of there, there's a lot of grey paint there. Wipe the brush, load it up again, and we'll get some of this darker colour in now. With the actual solid colour that it is. Hope you can hear me okay.
coming out of her hair. And what I'm going to do is grab my liner, nice long lines, just like so. So it looks like her hair's loose and free instead of big blotchy paint strokes, brush mokes. All right, now I've got the lighter color on my script liner and I'm just putting some highlights and bringing them back through here as well just to give it a bit more character and dimension so it's not too much of a boring blob. It's just got some beautiful thin hair strokes through it coming here and there and everywhere. Okay, I've finished her hair. I'm grabbing just the plain phalo blue and all these crease lines in her lower skirt and her top of tunic or dress. I'm just sort of probably giving these a bit more detail or just bullshit nonsense really. Just to break it up and give it a bit more. Oh yeah, that's not bad look about it you know I think that'll do it all right I'll just put my autograph on here okay there's my autograph Okay, we'll pull a few more numbers out, we'll frame the painting, and then we'll pull out the winner, okay? So, let's grab a couple of numbers here. Alright, I've got number 42, let's see who 42 belongs to. Brian Davies, Brian Davies from Norwich England. Norwich, England. We've got number 13, let's see who number 13 belongs to. Mary Ann Hermans from Holland. And another one here is number 15. Om Jigme from London. London. Thanks for joining us in this competition. Now all those shout outs, they're going back into the barrel so they won't miss out on the main prize. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to seal that back. Now we're going to frame this painting Okay. Yeah, we got the girl sitting on the sand dune there. Simple wave coming over the clouded sky. It looks lovely. Okay, so we've got a, a girl sitting on the dunes here. I don't know that maybe we'll call it something like that, okay? So now, all right, and we'll see who's the winner of my painting tutorial giveaway, okay? So let's open this up and we'll put our hand in here. Let's find a number in here and see what we can pull out oh, who's going to be the lucky number okay there we go a number 27 Reese. number 27 let's see who the lucky number 27 was Yamaha from Oregon USA Yamaha from Oregon in USA you are the winner of my third giveaway tutorial painting I hope you love this and hang it on your wall with pride all right hang on a minute those back in there now we'll do another one of these in a couple of more weeks time as well if you like these things happening now also Lynn Seymour asked me do I receive gifts of course I bloody would I love I love gifts I love rolls of cash rolls of cash are the best gift you can give to a person like me okay big wads of it and um, glow caddick you did a brilliant rendition of the eye that I did I just want to give you a friendly, honest tip. Try not to do lines around everything. You can have the colours meeting. You don't have to do it with an, a line. Other from that, your tear duct, your highlighting, everything was spot on and brilliant. I love it and I'm sure of a lot of other people will as well. Now the first and second winners were Lynn Haywood and Cassidy Jones. Now we have a third winner which is Yamaha from from Oregon and USA. So I hope the three of you all keep in touch with each other and build my community and we all keep on board and try and make these competitions grow. Okay? 
I want to thank you for joining me. All the best. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.